candidates a chance in the elections. I mean, do you think this is a fair charge? I don't think it's fair at all. I was trying to say that there are better days ahead for Amno. I was trying to say that uh, that I represented a new generation that wanted to revive and reform Amno, and I don't see how that positive messaging of um, understanding the public's disenchantment with Amno and wanting to restore the credibility of the grand old party, as you said, as something that is negative. And you have to remember that I was contesting in an urban area in which we have been uncompetitive for many, many years. And that is precisely the sort of vision that they wanted to see. My point was not against the party. My point was not against the party membership, but my point was against the party leadership. Uh, so perhaps on that score, there was criticism, but it was certainly not to run down uh, the party um, in, in the general election. Mm -hmm. It was more giving hope to people. sacked outright. Tan Sri Nong Omar was initially suspended, allegedly, for 15, 16 counts of election sabotage against the party, which he then opted to terminate his membership. Uh, we have Datuk Sri Shamuddin on, the Sembrong MP, who was suspended for six years for allegedly engineering the signing of SDs in support of Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin as Prime Minister. So why do you think you were fired um, while others weren't for actions that were similar or had even worse bearing on the party? I don't know why there's a distinction uh, between me and Noma. Uh, he was initially suspended, but he was at the Supreme Council meeting because he was still a member. I'm not a member, Hisham's not a member. And rather than being suspended, no said, you might as well expel me, which is the right thing to do because if you're suspended, you're in a sin bin, you can't do anything. <clears throat> you can't contest for positions uh, and essentially you are neutered within the party. So I think No made the right decision to just say, you might as well just expel me. And uh, apparently Zahid told him to get out. And um, the distinction between me and Hisham, that's quite clear. I, I have no um, cachet for, uh, for Amno in, in Parliament. I'm not a member of Parliament. Uh, I think if uh, Hisham was not a member of Parliament, he would have been uh, expelled as well. But because uh, Zahid needs those numbers to prop up the government, uh, he can't afford to uh, expel Hisham. By the way, uh, no, they said no had 15 charges. I saw the the um, show cause letter, only three charges. So we don't know where all these additional charges came from. We don't know where all these accusations uh, came from. As I said, it was unilateral. It was not even a consensus. It was not um, a consensus uh, by the Supreme Council. In fact, more people spoke out against the sacking and the and the suspension then supported it. So he received a show cause letter, even while you didn't? He did, but he was asked to present himself today. Mm. But he was sacked on Friday. So we don't know what happened to due process. Kari, what does it say that former President um, Datuk Sri Najib Raza, who was convicted of corruption by the highest court and in the land and imprisoned, remains a member of UMNO to this day? Well... If you look at the AMNO uh, constitution, if you are charged in court, you have to vacate your uh, position. And um, we know that uh, that was not adhered to in the case of uh, Dr. Najib, especially when you look at his position as the head of uh, Pekan division. So there does exist <clears throat> double standards within the party and the application of the constitution based on the individual and based on whether or not that individual is supportive or useful to the party leadership. I want to come back to the question of due process. So you and others that have been punished have railed against the lack of due process in meeting out these penalties. I think every high profile member expelled from UMNO previously has complained about the exact same thing. So this is a long standing problem, but disciplinary procedures wasn't an issue you were publicly vocal about until the problem actually befell you. So, I mean, are these aberrations in due no, process that, that, acceptable when the leader is someone that you are aligned with? No, that's not that's not true. Um, I think in previous cases, perhaps not publicly, but we have always, and I have always um, said during 
meetings, whether during the Supreme Council or the management meetings, which I was part of, that due process must be adhered to, that we cannot summarily dismiss uh, people, because this is natural justice within the party. Um, if you are taking away the rights of that member, if you are expelling the member, then he must have his day in front of the disciplinary board, or he must have his day in front of court, so to speak. Uh, so I know that comment came from uh, Zaid uh, Ibrahim saying that uh, no one uh, kicked up a fuss when he was uh, uh, thrown out. Maybe not publicly, but we certainly did say that anybody who falls foul of disciplinary rules um, has a right to explain themselves. Okay, so at least behind closed doors, if not in the open, you say that you've always called for yes. due process. And you've pointed this out in expulsions of Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, for example, yeah. or even for Zaid sure. Ibrahim himself, Tan Sri yes. Anwar Musa. Yep. Now, one columnist, Jocelyn Tan, described the culling on Friday as the night of the long knives. <laughs> Does this culling shatter any illusions that UMNO is a party based on democracy, especially since we've talked of before that due process has been an issue in the party in the past? It's very sad because we always, and I've been loyal to Amno right up till the end. And I still consider myself an Amno person. Uh, and for the party to descend to this um, is extremely sad and disappointing for me. Whatever one thinks of Amno, we have always prided ourselves on being a party that was open as far as um, electoral contests within the party is concerned, allowing people to uh, run for positions within the party. And one thing that Najib did, which was good, was to even expand the suffrage uh, of people who voted for the top leadership from just the delegates at PWTC to hundreds and thousands of delegates at the division level across the country. And that made for a much more democratic party. And if you look at the last presidential elections, yes, I lost to Zahid, but I got more than 60 divisions. And if you combine the popular vote of Tengku Razali and I, we had much more uh, votes than Zahid. So in that sense, AMNO was always an open party as far as uh, electoral contests go. Of course, from time to time, you will have advisory statements saying don't contest for number one, number two, uh, but not to the extent of passing a motion and saying it's barred for you to contest for the presidency and the deputy presidency. Okay. I'm speaking to Kairi Jamaluddin, former member of UMNO, on the circumstances surrounding his expulsion from the party on Friday. When we come back, what's next for the once PM hopeful? Stay tuned to BFM 89.9. You are listening to The Breakfast Grill, brought to you by U-Mobile. 5G now with you. We believe in unlimiting every potential, making the impossible possible. It's our passion determination and our purpose like how we pioneered unlimited streaming and unlimited data plans you mobile where your unlimited potential begins when the first ever ipod was revealed you heard the famous thousand songs that goes right in my pocket that's cool but what about having more than 65,000 podcasts in your pocket? Tap into our big library of podcasts from a wide variety of shows and topics ranging from business, health, music, culture and more. Only on our new and improved BFM app. Download or update the app now on the App Store or Google Play. You are listening to The Breakfast Grill, brought to you by U-Mobile. 5G now with you. Thanks for staying tuned to The Breakfast Grill. I'm speaking to Kairi Jamaluddin, former Minister of Health and a member of UMNO for 23 years before he was expelled on Friday by the UMNO Supreme Council for alleged disciplinary violations. Now, Kairi, we were talking earlier about the um, push that you made for the top two posts to be contested. You made no secret of your um intention to contest this post. Before JE15, you spoke very confidently about the potential for reform in UMNO, especially um, if you were to take the helm and you spoke about how you could feel there was an undercurrent of change in the party. Um, you were convinced. After the events of the GA and over the weekend, I mean, do you still hold that same view? 
I'm less sanguine about uh, Amno's prospects for the future because for us, for Amno, us, <laughs> for Amno to have come back from the disastrous electoral performance, it would have had to require a complete overhaul, starting with its leadership, and that would have necessitated the top two positions in uh, being contested uh, during the party election. And we know that that's not going to happen now. And we know that the voices of dissent, uh, especially those who are vocal, mine, uh, Nohoma, uh, Anwar Musa, we've all been dismissed. Kairi, maybe the point is you're, you were just outnumbered in the party. At the General Assembly, the motion for the top two posts to be uncontested, it was voted through. So uh. maybe you are the minority, actually. First of all, we have to distinguish between the central delegates at the assembly and the grassroots. I still believe that the grassroots, those in the 191 divisions and 15,000 plus odd branches across the country, wanted a contest. How can you not want a contest? You're left with 26 seats in parliament. Amno went from, as you said, uh, the dominant grand old party of Malaysia uh, to just one small party that has uh, been completely obliterated and decimated at the last election. So uh, the natural thing to do would be to say, OK, let's open and see who can restore our fortunes. That's just logical. And, and that was not allowed. Uh, and then the coming part- back to the assembly, um, when uh, the motion was amended... They were, the, the, the top two positions not being contested was not in the original motion. But when it was read by the delegate from Negeri Milan, from the Rimbau division, my old division, and again, I criticize Mat Hassan because uh, he, there's a huge conflict of interest there. He's the deputy president. And yet the delegate from his own division inserted this new uh, sentence within the motion saying that the top two is not to be contested. He was booed. He was roundly uh, booed by the delegates. Something happened overnight. And I, and again, people said that this this was also grounds for my expulsion. We know for a fact that um, non uh, delegates were ushered into the hall uh, on the second day uh, to stand around and to shout uh, their support when the motion was asked to be. Uh, voted on. Is this a voice vote? Was this the is a voice vote. I have to explain vote. to people because a lot of people, especially some of your listeners, don't understand how what happens at the AMNO AGM. It's not a secret ballot. It's a voice vote. It's a voice vote. I mean, it's it's a rowdy voice vote. Um, not even like parliament. You know, you, in parliament, you you know who's there. You know who's a member of parliament. This is, it's a it's a hall. You don't know who's an observer. You don't know who's a delegate. I know for a fact that non-delegates were in there whipping up support uh, for the motion. And and there is a certain chemistry within the hall that once that happens, everyone just goes with the the flow. And that's what took place. So I I, I will doubt that uh, the majority of members outside would have agreed. And I would also um, cast aspersions on what happened within the hall itself. So you say that the vote on the motion was rigged? I mean, I'm wondering why you didn't launch... It was launch... padded. It certainly was padded. Why it... haven't you lodged a complaint? You chose instead to take the matter to social media, which is useful for causing a stir. But does it actually resolve anything? Who do you complain to? You're complaining to the very institution that uh, padded and rigged this uh, vote. You've lauded members for reporting to the Register of Societies, for example. Yes, the Register of Societies is different. I mean, you, you complain to the party secretariat. These are the people responsible for bulldozing the motion through. So the only recourse that we had was ROS. And um, I'm happy that the party members lodged the report against uh, ROS. Uh, and uh, we wait for the Registrar of Societies to make, a, uh, not a ruling, but uh, to advise whether or not the motion uh, is constitutional or not. But as far as I personally am concerned, that's academic because I can't contest anyway. Uh, and um, I hope that uh, if the Registrar of Societies uh, rules in favour of an open contest, saying that the motion is unconstitutional, somebody could step up 
to to run for the presidency. But most of the leading contenders have either been expelled or neutered. So that's it. I think it's checkmate. Are you planning to appeal this decision, Kyrie? Again, no, because um, appealing means appealing against the the same entity that uh, has um, <clears throat> unilaterally and summarily executed me from the <laughs> from the party. So there's no point. I I, I discussed the matter with uh, No, uh, and we said, uh, and and also Sharil, and um, what's the point of appealing? They're, they're intent on um, on throwing us out or, or keeping us in the sin bin. Mm. Now, although there's been an outpouring of support for you on social media, the upper echelons of the party that remain in the good graces of the leadership have been largely silent in the public eye, with the exception perhaps of Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri, who disagreed uh, with the decision or the manner in which it was taken in an Instagram post. Do you feel abandoned by senior members of the party over this matter? I don't feel abandoned because um, this is just the way it is. Everyone tends to fall in line. Um, they have their own personal interests to uh, look out for. This is politics, after all. Um, I do appreciate the private messages of support. Um, Who have you received private messages of support yeah, from? Members of the Supreme Council uh, saying that uh, it shouldn't have been so, but it is so. <laughs> so uh, it is what it is. Um, I do appreciate uh, Isma Sabri speaking out and he spoke out publicly and within during the Supreme Council uh, saying that due process was not adhered to and being a lawyer I think that was uh, that was uh, something sensible for him to say uh, but um, the party moves on uh, it's always moved on I'm not the first expulsion within this party um, there have been uh, others who have been expelled. Uh, Dr. Mahathir Muhammad, Dr. Uh, Anwar Ibrahim, Tan Sri Mahyudin Yassin. I'm not saying that I'm uh, as important as these people, but the party moves on, no matter who is expelled. Kyrie, ultimately, you took a da- you took a gamble or several gambles um, that pitted you in direct opposition to the current party president. I mean. Did you miscalculate your chances? Is this the question no, of the I, wrong strategy at the wrong time? I, I don't think so because um, was it the wrong were the wrong tactics deployed? I, I, I don't think so. I look, I have nothing against uh, Zahid personally. I still consider him a, a friend. Uh, he probably doesn't consider me a, a friend anymore. But uh, I have nothing against him personally. Uh, I just wanted a, a, an open contest because the fact of the matter is that he presided over the most disastrous electoral outing for uh, the party. And my point was very simple. Um, if uh, Pala was asked to uh, step down as the president after we lost uh, our two-thirds majority in parliament, if Najib was asked to step down after the 2018 elections, the very least you could have done if you did not want to step down was at least open up the party election for an open contest and let the members decide. Have you had any, I guess, outreach to Zayed Hamidi since this announcement or even just before it? How have you have you spoken to him? The last time was, was when he jabbed me in the stomach and said that he was ready to fight. That was at the General <laughs> Assembly. So that and, was, that was and it. And the next day, he wasn't ready to fight. Yeah, that was it. Um. Kyrie, I do want to know whether you regret past decisions or actions that could have affected how you're viewed today. Um, there's no shortage of people who remember your days on the fourth floor at the Prime Minister's office negatively. I mean, did that set up a foundation, that a path that led you to the position you're at now? Not really. I mean, I don't quite understand uh, what the, the crime is here. Um, it's been many, many years, and had there been any... Uh, serious uh, transgressions, then that would have caught up to be. It's all perception. And perception is something that you have to live with. Okay, so you're not worried that you have a political crosshairs on your back at the moment. I mean, there are several allegations of shady dealings that have shadowed you throughout your very long career in politics. You've uh, denied any wrongdoing, but... Are you expecting the MACC to come knocking at your door? Uh, I'm I'm open to any uh, investigation. This is not the first time I've been out uh, of uh, power. Um, in 2018, when uh, I became the AMNO youth leader, I was put in the sin bin by Najib. Usually, the AMNO youth leader would be brought into cabinet for one entire term. I was uh, I was uh, put in the um, in the naughty box. 
Uh, in 2018, of course, uh, after having served as minister for five years, I was out again. Uh, this is the third time I'm I'm down and out. So every time you're down and out, you have uh, a target on your back. Uh, so I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm fine with uh, anything that uh, people want to ask me about my time in power. If you are a minister, you have to make certain decisions. Um, very important decisions, and you have to be accountable for it, whether you are still a minister or not. Uh, so I'm, I stand by any decision that I've made. Okay, I know everyone's wanting to know what's going to happen next for you, Kyrie. Hold that thought. We'll get to that perhaps after the 8.30 a.m. news bulletin. But I want to ask you now about... Um, Dato Ahmad Zaid Hamidi and his uh, presence in the government. You say that uh, you still consider him a friend, but um, following what's happened, I'm sure there's no love lost between you. Do you see Zaid Hamidi as a threat to the current government of Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim based on the way he's leading the UMNO party at the moment? Well, I believe that the Prime Minister requires a stable government and a stable, stable government necessitates him having coalition partners, post-electoral coalition in this case, who can add value to him. Um, and the question that the Prime Minister has to ask himself is whether the Amno under Zahid is adding value to his government or not. Will this culling exercise hurt Amno's chances in the state elections, do you think? I don't want to inflate my own personal importance, but uh, I would answer that question by focusing on the decision itself rather than the people that were culled, um, yes, I do think so. Because I think the public has reacted very negatively to the decision uh, made by Zahid. I'm speaking to Kairi Jamaluddin, former member of UMNO, on the circumstances of his expulsion from the party. We will continue this conversation after the 8.30 a.m. news bulletin, so stay tuned to The Breakfast Grill. BFM 89.9. You are listening to The Breakfast Grill, brought to you by U-Mobile. 5G now with you. The News on BFM 89.9. Here are the main stories at 8.30. UMNO Information Chief Isham Jalil insists the party followed due process in the sacking and suspension of eight UMNO leaders. He cited the party's constitution, which states that the party's Supreme Council had endorsed the decision, making them valid. Kairi Jamaluddin and Tansri No Omar were both sacked from UMNO, while Sharil Hamdan, Datu Sri Hishamuddin Hussein and four others were suspended for six years. Separately, UMNO Secretary General Datu Sri Ahmad Maslan confirms that the Arau and Tanah Merah divisions will carry on with their election despite being suspended. He says administrators will be appointed to handle the polling process at the suspended divisions. Tetapi kita buat 26 hari ini di 22,000 cawangan dulu. Dan 22,000 cawangan tu bukan 22,000 musyarat. Dia hendaklah dicampur dengan wanita pemuda putri. Jadi saudara boleh bayangkan berapa puluh ribu musyarat dan pemilihan. UMNO ni parti besar yang pemilihannya akan dilakukan beberapa hari lagi ni. Meanwhile, USM political analyst Azmil Tayyip told PFM News the upcoming state elections for Selangor, Penang, Kedah, Perak, Kelantan and Trengganu will see closer cooperation between AMNO and Pakatan Harapan, driven more by political expediency. The impact on the grassroots has to be demoralising, especially as the party is heading into the state elections. As far as Anwar is concerned, if Zahid can keep AMNO firmly in the unity government, that is all that matters. If anything, the purge will make AMNO even more dependent on the federal government, as it only has as patronage as a way to gain support from the Malay voters. Briefly, jailed former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Razak's son, Datuk Nazifuddin Najib, has offered himself to contest for the Deputy Amno Youth Chief Post in the upcoming party polls. Home Minister Dato Sri Saifuddin Nasution Ismail says all border control agencies are on standby to manage congestion at entry points nationwide following reports of heavy traffic flow causing delays at the Immigration, Customs, Quarantine and Security Complex in Rantau Panjang. Saifuddin adds that crowding at the Kelantan border town is seasonal. Kita pun sedia maklum, aliran itu adalah terlibat dalam aktiviti ekonomi, domestic tourism. Dia fenomena turun naik sama ada angka yang tinggi ataupun angka yang terkawal. Itu tidak se- 
seteruk keadaan yang berlaku di mana mobiliti sehari ratusan ribu warga Johor ke Singapura. Kita sentiasa komited untuk fasilitasi keadaan itu bagi memberikan kelegaan kepada rakyat. In international news, Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan has signaled that his country could agree to Finland's NATO membership ahead of Sweden. He says Turkey will only agree to Sweden's membership if they extradite a list of 120 persons deemed to be militants from the banned Kurdistan Workers' Party. Finland and Sweden applied to join NATO last year following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, while Turkey and Hungary are the remaining countries that have yet to ratify their membership. In football, the Real Sociedad and Real Madrid La Liga match ended in a goalless draw yesterday. Real Madrid recorded eight, recorded 20 goal attempts, while Real Sociedad created seven. Barcelona are in first place in the standings, followed by Real Madrid. Earlier, Atletico Madrid earned a 1-0 victory against Osasuna, bringing them to fourth in the standings on 34 points behind Real Sociedad. In business news, the Malaysian Association of Tour and Travel Agents does not expect the strengthening of the ringgit against the US dollar to impact the desires of Malaysians to travel abroad. Its Honorary Secretary General Nigel Wong also says that given Malaysia's currency position, Mata is anticipating a lot of inbound travel. There is actually packages or trips or tours that meet every level of spending. Whether you choose to spend less domestically or more, whether you choose to fly short haul, long haul, medium haul, we don't see any sort of major difference happening. In fact, we are anticipating an increase thanks to the recent opening borders of China and more flights being added to global air capacity. In corporate news, Wells Buy Holdings plans to use the proceeds from its recent IPO to expand further into Thailand. According to NST, the snack food maker believes there is still a significant underserved market there as it also deepens cooperation with large retail chain outlets. And James Cameron's avatar, The Way of Water, continued to dominate the box office charts, taking in an estimated $15.7 million this weekend in North American theatres to make it the fourth leading global grocer of all time. In markets, Asian shares are mixed at the open. Japan's Nikkei is up 0.3%. South Korea's Kospi is down 0.3% and Australian shares are down 0.1%. On the forex market, one US dollar is worth 4 ringgit 24. The Sing dollar is at 3.23. The BFM Traffic Report. The earlier accident on the KL Sromban Highway just before the Kajang exit is now causing a 14km crawl from Nilai. Expect to take about an hour to clear this. Meanwhile, there is a 4km crawl on the Old Klang Road from the Pearl Point Shopping Mall towards Mid Valley. Expect to take about 30 minutes to get through this. I'm Keith Kam. For more headlines, follow BFM News on Twitter. You are now up to date on BFM 89.9, The Business Station. The way it moves. The way it looks. Even the way it speaks. There's something special about a mini. And this 1st to 5th February at Bangsa Shopping Centre is your chance to discover why. Come join our mini Big Love Roadshow. Find out more at mini.my today. Build Fairer Malaysia. BFM 89.9. The Business Station. You are listening to The Breakfast Grill, brought to you by U-Mobile. 5G now with you. You're listening to an extended edition of The Breakfast Grill. I'm Shazana Mokhtar. On the show with me today is Kairi Jamaluddin, former memdo, member of UMNO, who was expelled from the party on Friday. We've been discussing... That sounds so bad. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is the truth. It's the truth, uh, yeah. But, uh, yes. <laughs> We've been discussing what happened within the party, um, what he thinks of the party's chances moving forward. I would like to uh, turn the focus on you now, uh, Kairi. This is something everyone's... Been asking in your last conversation on BFM with Xiaoning, when she asked you what you'd do if you lost in GE15, you said you'd cross that bridge when it comes. We've reached that bridge, Kyrie. That bridge has just collapsed. Even beyond that, (laughs) now that you're without a political party. So do you still see a future in politics for yourself? And what does that path look like? I'm going to take my time uh, in contemplating the future. I've had uh, a slew of offers uh, coming in um, after I lost in Sungai Buloh and certainly after I was, was expelled by the party on Friday. Uh, so I'm very thankful for these opportunities. And they range from political to academic uh, to corporate. Um, and I'll decide and, and announce in, in due course what uh, my next move is. 
um, yeah, you know, I love football. Everyone knows that. And this, I'm, I'm like a free transfer now. So uh, I'm looking for a club. Uh, and um, I'm s- scanning my options and, and seeing what, what makes sense uh, going forward. But it's not a decision that uh, I will make lightly. It's not something that um, I think uh, one can be flippant about. It, it is uh, serious business, politics, uh, and I still want to be involved in politics. Whether and when I come back to frontline politics, uh, that's something that I want to take my uh, time with, of course, there are opportunities that presents uh, that that uh, present themselves. State elections, for instance, uh, that have to take place in the next six months or so. That's a possibility. You see um, yourself running as an independent candidate, perhaps, or with a party. Either, either, uh, all options are on the table, or I could just give it a miss. Uh, and uh, focus on, as I said, other opportunities, academic business opportunities, uh, and then come back uh, at a at a later date. But as I said, it's twenty three years of your life in one political party, through thick and thin. Um, it's difficult uh, for me to to move on, uh, as far as my my own heart is concerned, um, because I didn't leave. I was thrown out. I was sacked from the party. So um, I, I will need to adjust to that reality. And uh, if I choose another vehicle, I'll have to do so very carefully. What circumstances um, would you join another political party? I guess, what's the criteria? You've, you feel that offers from Gurakan and Bersatu, Priketa National, have said they'd welcome you into their fold. I mean, what, what, what are you considering, I guess, in terms of what party you want to join next? So I think the consideration would be something that is aligned to my own vision for for the country, one that is inclusive, one that is uh, based on uh, good governance, one that is progressive, uh, but it also has to be a comfortable fit. Um, there has to be chemistry there. Um, of course, joining a, a new political party will be awkward at first because presumably you would have been at loggerheads at some point as an opposing party. Uh, but um, that's what politics is about. It's about um, winning people over, convincing people. So that's something that uh, I think um, I'm up for. But again, um, it has to align with your vision uh, and not just be something that is opportunistic or expedient for, for you. Hmm. You're seen as chummy with Rafi Ramli and Nurul Izzah Anwar of PKR. I mean, is could PKR be an alternative home for you? Is that something you've ever considered? I think I will go and listen to everyone that wants to see me. <laughs> and uh, I've had uh, no shortage of lunch invitations this week. Um, I don't think I'll be paying for lunch this week or next. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go and go and listen. I'm going to uh, listen to what people have to say. Uh, but uh, my message is I'm in no rush to decide. Uh, so let me take my time and... I will be very open with um, whoever wants to uh, meet with me. Kyrie, you said inclusivity. That's an important criteria. I, are you looking to enter a party that's not race-based? You've been a part. You've been a member of a race-based party for twenty-three years. Has that consideration changed? I was member of a, a race-based political party within a multiracial coalition. Barisa National. So there are layered dynamics in Amno Barisa National, as there are in PH as well. Uh, there are parties which are multiracial in name, but in reality quite dominant uh, with a single ethnic community. So whether I join a party which is uh, ostensibly multiracial or um, a party that is uh, race-based, but part of a bigger uh, coalition, a broader church, if you like. Oh, wow, that's a bad term. Uh, bigger tent, if you like. Um, that's something that um, I'll have to decide. There are no other coalitions that uh, are as broadly 
multiracial as the current unity government, though, is there? But the unity government is not a permanent uh, political entity. Okay, so uh, you're entity. saying in the permutations of exactly. what can happen <laughs> in the political there landscape. There are many permutations within this unity government. This unity government is not a permanent entity unless it becomes a permanent entity. That's, that's something that I, I have to wait and see. What about setting up your own party, Kairi? This is something oh, that's been dear. done successfully I mean, by UMNO exiles in the past. Is this Successfully? Uh, we have seen. Part, uh, parties that have come up, Bursatu is still in existence. Oh yeah, Bursatu, I suppose. Bajuang Bajuang is maybe. still around. Bajuang, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's all. That's always an option. Option is you join an existing party or you set up your own party. That's that's still an option. But I think uh, I'm in a listening mode right now to what uh, people have to say or offer. Um, but that's also presumptuous. It's as though anyone's offering me anything. <laughs> so let me go and listen to what uh, people have to say first. Do you see yourself returning to UMNO? Is that ultimately what you desire? I'm not sure. I- I've given this this question uh, some thought over the last two days, and I'm not sure that. Um, and and this was this was not uh, overnight. This was not over the last weekend, uh, but the the gradual. Um, decline of AMNO, I, I fear that it might have reached the point of no return. Uh, so if I do um, c- contemplate returning to AMNO, it would have to be a very different entity than it is uh, today. Uh, brand equity, um, also leadership, uh, has uh, deteriorated tremendously, and I'm not quite sure that it can resuscitate itself. Sounds like a tall order, Kairi, given Amno Group Think and how, despite your calls for reform, and you say that there's desire for reform that hasn't really taken shape uh, in Amno since 2018. Um, but in any case, many have drawn parallels with the trajectory of previous prime ministers. You yourself mentioned uh, several names before that left Amno but came back to the party and uh, went up to that top post. Um, is this still is this something that you take heart from? And is your ambition of leading the country as prime minister still intact? I would like to have the privilege uh, one day of leading the country. I'm not quite sure how that's going to happen now, uh, but I do understand that politics is not a linear path. Um, There are multiple troughs uh, that one has to go down uh, before they can emerge uh, as a leader, not just of their party, but of the country. So, yes, I, I, I do still uh, want to lead this country one day. Um, how I get there, I don't know. But uh, I want to make sure that the decisions that I make over the next few months are decisions that are based on a vision of a country that I'm happy and comfortable with. Kyrie, thank you very much for speaking thank with me you. today. Thank I've you. been speaking to Kyrie Jabaludin, former government minister, former MP, and former member of UMNO. This has been the Breakfast Grill on BFM 89.9. The BFM Breakfast Grill is brought to you by U Mobile. 5G now with you. Unlock opportunities across the globe. Trade on 12 exchanges over seven markets globally, including Bursa, Singapore Exchange, Hong Kong Exchange, New York Stock Exchange, and more. Consolidate your share investment seamlessly all in one account. Start your investment journey with Standard Chartered Smart Stocks, an exciting new global equities trading platform. Open a Smart Stocks account to enjoy brokerage fee from as low as...